not about the services that you want. It's about the healthcare services that you need. Among the four key pillars of the government's Big Four agenda is universal health care coverage or simply UHC. However, many a times UHC is confused for NHIF and as Dr. Wangaringanga, UHC Technical Advisor Executive Office of the President noted, the two are separate health coverage entities. We really need to understand what universal health coverage is. Universal health coverage means everybody can access the health services that they need and that these health services are of sufficient quality and they access these services without going through financial hardship. So this has many, many more elements beyond money. NHIF is an insurance, a health insurance scheme that covers financial protection only, which is only one component of UHC. There is a component of access, there is a component of quality that may not be sufficiently addressed by a health insurance scheme by itself. While financial cost is not the only factor in universal health care coverage, it plays a key role in both negative or positive uptake of health care coverage. Dr. Edwin Baraza from Kemri Wellcome Trust pointed out that this should not be the case. The challenge with direct payment is that you can be hit by a sickness when you don't have any money in your pocket. Okay? And when you make that direct payment or out-of-pocket payment, then it presents financial challenges to you. The other challenge with direct payment is that you do not pool resources. Because if all of us contribute taxes or all of us contribute to a health insurance scheme, then we have pooled our resources. And when one of us is sick, we use those resources of that person. And then when we are sick, we use those resources on ourselves. And because of that, the cost of your contribution doesn't have to be so much. It's a manageable contribution. But when you always have to pay for yourself, then the cost will always be so much higher and you're going, it's going to present financial challenges to you. Universality here is that everybody is in. With the new constitution came devolution and services such as health were to be moved to county level. This was in a bid to improve health services at grassroots level, but that has not been the case as Dr. Wangari noted. To a large extent at the beginning of devolution, this is exactly what we saw. We saw an increase in health workers, we saw an increase in ratio of health workers to population, we saw an increase in distribution of health commodities, we saw governance at the local level. This happened. We must remember that there is um, the PFM Act that regulates that um, the health budget must be structured in a 30-70 proportion, where 30 goes to development and 70 goes towards recurrent expenditure. So then therefore the resource budget, the, the resource envelope for, di, for um, recurrent expenditure is actually constrained. So you can only increase, for example, health workers to a certain extent. In this particular instance, what you will see is that counties are no longer able to hire doctors in the proportion they need them because on their payroll, they have very many doctors who have gone off to school, which is a right to many doctors and it's also a right to the citizens because we do require these specialists. We require these specialists at those very um, counties. So what do you do in a situation where you require specialists but you still require medical, uh, general medical practitioners but the resource envelope you have is constrained? You shouldn't be trying to protect the rich only. Moving forward, Dr. Baraza says universal health care coverage is a brilliant plan that has worked wonders across the world. However, for it to bear fruit in the country, the government must do three key things. Number one, we need to increase funding for the health sector. You know, when you look at benchmarks that have been proposed, it has been proposed that the government should spend at least, you know, government expenditure on health should at least be 5% of its GDP. In Kenya right now, we are doing 2.2%. So the health sector is significantly underfunded. So the question is, who is paying the, the, the gap? That gap is paid by Kenyans out of pocket and other mechanisms. But the Kenyan health sector is predominantly, or rather significantly, reliant on out of pocket payments. The second one is that we have to move away from voluntary contributions. We, have to, we, we live in a country where 80% of the population are in the informal sector, which means they don't have a pay slip, they have irregular incomes, Sometimes, some months they have income, some months they don't have income and so on. So it's unpredictable. Then 20%, only 20% of the country has, or the people that are employed, has a pay slip. 
So what does that mean? It means that, for example, if you ask people to pay insurance, it's only the 20% that will pay in a mandatory way. The other 80%, you have to keep on going and asking them and pleading with them to pay to, to a health insurance scheme. So it is voluntary. And the problem with that is that we have a situation known as a adverse selection, a situation where people do not want to pay, but then when they fall sick or they know they're going to fall sick, then they pay their health insurance. And the problem with that is that then it makes that pool of, uh, of final, or rather that risk pool, very, very risky. You know, it makes healthcare costs very, very high and it makes it unsustainable. The third thing that the government really, or rather, you know, stakeholders within the health system need to think about is to remember that within a society you have people who are vulnerable, we have people who are disadvantaged, we have people who can't benefit from healthcare services if you don't take that extra step you know, that extra step to make sure that they benefit. So, for example, we have people who are disabled, we have people who are poor, we have, you know, people who are vulnerable in so many other ways, the elderly and so on. So as we design our health financing systems, we have to think about how do we design them in a way that enables these people not to be left behind. In health economics, we have this struggle. Right? Health continues to be a key sector that the country continues to grapple with in terms of inadequate personnel, proper tools of practice and finance. Equity might not cure all these diseases, but would be a solid place to start. Because me, my year, and a quarter, is a five kilo.